Intro music. <laughs> a star for the ages for Tony Gwynn, number 3,000. They have acquired Eric Johnson and Fernando Tatis Jr. from the White Sox in exchange for James Shield. <laughs> My name is James. My name is Joey. And this is the Brothers Padre. James, James, James. Another week in the books. It felt like a month and a half. Yes, it did. It was. Yes. Like, did you know we played the Twins this week? I forgot. And I was at the game. One of the games. And so were you. <laughs> so was I. I totally <laughs> forgot. I watched a game today. <laughs> this weekend. It was a long week. Yes, it was. And we've recorded three podcasts in between our last weekly recap and this one. And so, This yeah. being the third, yeah. Pardon me? This one being the third. We did Hater, Soto, and the recap. That's right. And the recap. Yeah, that's right. This is... The recap of the trade deadline. It's been a very long week. It's been... Dude, it's been wild. I, I mean, I, I, w- I probably should have listened to our last recap and seen what... I said some things about me becoming the Joker, and I'm just glad I'm not. I'm, I, am, I'm I am not too. Oh my goodness! So should we recap this week all eight games, Joey? That's also why I feel so long. There's a lot of baseball. A lot too. of baseball. Yeah. I don't get wrong. The, the both Mud and Don and Jesse and Tony were talking about this today. Like, oh, it just feels like we've been watching the Rockies forever. Yep. Yeah. All right. Friday, July 29th, the beginning of this week. The Minnesota Twins came to town. That's right. Minnesota's still around. And we beat them 10 to 1. Honestly, I forgot we beat them so badly because <laughs> it's been a long week. Blake Snell, six innings pitched, only giving up run run, struck out seven. Really dominant. Great game. Uh, Voigt got a couple of hits. Hosmer got a hit. Hassan Kim got two hits. So, honestly, nobody really cares (laughs) if we won. (laughs) Game two, Saturday. The game I was in tennis to, we ended up losing seven to four. Joe Musgrove. Did not have his stuff. He went six innings. Actually, scratch that. He did have his stuff. My God, I am so unbelievable. I think what you mean to say, and I'll I'll, I'll, I'll help you out here. Joe Musgrove struggled for the first four innings. He did. He did not have his his stuff, so he just, he labored a lot. Yeah, he labored a lot. He only gave up two runs, and he struck out eight. It was clear his slider was not sliding properly, but he managed to get it working uh Marahone gave up four runs yep. and that was the big difference of that game and again we lost but nobody again nothing that this was n- this not is the pre soto era pre soto era nothing at least it doesn't even feel like you should recap them <laughs> nothing should matter <laughs> sunday the game you attended we lost we won three to two <laughs> Just so out of it, dude. I am really out of it. Sean Manaya, six innings. Yep. Two earned runs, seven strikeouts. Fantastic for Sean Manaya. We won the series against the AL Central leaders. Even if you want to be a good team, you have to be competitive against the good teams and beat up on the bad teams. Mm-hmm. And wouldn't you know it, a bad team rolled into town. Yep. Colorado Rockies showed up, and it seems like they've been here for a month. <laughs> Game one, we beat them four to one. Uh, Machado got a hit. Clevenger, seven innings pitched, seven strikeouts, one earned run. Probably Clevenger's best start. He was on top. He was moving. He was uh, efficient with his pitches. He looked great. Then Tuesday came around, which was a doubleheader. 
The first game we ended up winning by a um, a small margin, thirteen to five. Should be noted this is also trade deadline day. Yes. So, game wow. one started. Yep. We did not know who our team, what our team was going to look like, because we thought we we're going to have Juan Soto, but there was still a little like, uh, will Hosmer go? Will he won't? But we ended up winning. 13 to 5. It, 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 I, I, the game was a, uh, a lot of fun because it, it felt like a change of a guard was happening. Right. And there, everyone was like on adrenaline. These, I'll be honest, these, the doubleheader games and the game yesterday, the fourth game, all felt like everyone was super high on like, oh, we're going all in. Yes. And so that was really fun. Darvish pitched six, pitched six innings, seven strikeouts, gave up three runs. So in a, a good game. All right, we're on the last three now. Game two of the doubleheader. <laughs> Padres won three to two. Mm-hmm. Reese Kinnear came up to start this game. Did not pitch very well. He gave up two runs, only put, pitched two, three and two-thirds innings. But doesn't matter because uh, this game was weird because both teams scored two runs in the first inning. Yep. And then it was that way until the bottom of the ninth, and Trent Grisham came up and walked it off. I'm loving me some Trent these days. Trent's looking hot. Yes, he is. And that's awesome. And Trent has been a walk off machine this year. It's good to see. And then. Da, 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 da. <laughs> What's that? That's dawn of a new age, James. <laughs> the age of Soto is upon us. <laughs> Wednesday's game. The game where the Padres and the Padre fans got to see Juan Soto for the first time. I was in attendance. So loyal listeners of the show knows I was also lucky enough to see one of the world's one of the playoff games in 1998 it was the game in the nlcs the game we thought we we're going to sweep the braves in but we actually ended up losing that game and going to atlanta and winning the series but that was qualcomm or jack qualcomm sold out everybody wearing padre gear super excited this game was the closest i felt like I've ever been since that moment. I could only see, I only saw one Rockies fan. It was this lost teenager wearing a <laughs> Rockies shirt. I, I, I mean, I thought all the Rockies fans just sold, sold all the tickets to party fans to say the game was electric. It was just, just watch the highlights. It was insane. And the crowd, and we ended up winning nine to one. Soto only got one hit, but he walked twice. We predicted his first bat was going to be a walk, and he scored a run. Brandon Dreary had a grand slam. Slam Diego's back. And Blake Snell, not to be overlooked, six innings, nine strikeouts. One earned run. It was a phenomenal game. Josh Bell also walked twice and scored both times. Mm Mm-hmm. Machado hit a home run as well. Jake Cronworth hit a home run. Yeah, it, it was. And the entire city went nuts. Oh, yeah. And do you know that um, Johnny Cash song, The Night Hank Williams Came to Town? Yeah, yeah. Legitimately. I'm this, sure everyone of our listeners totally knows that, Because l- you're always so apt with your references. Yeah. <laughs> I am a 75-year-old man. <laughs> Anyways, it just felt like this was the night Juan Soto came to town. Oh, yeah. I get it. And downtown was crazy. Everyone was wearing Padre gear. It felt like the playoffs. And I told my friends who I went with the game with, I don't think the baseball gods were going to let us lose this game. Yeah. And it was outstanding. Finally, game eight of this long week. The Padres lost seven to three. 
it's really hard to beat a team five games in a row. Yes. <laughs> Especially people that we've played this, which is like game 12, game 13 against them. Like, we yeah. played them a lot. They know us really well. And you mentioned this was the most baseball type game ever. Right. The Rockies were getting bloop singles all over the place. And McMahon from the Rockies just hits Joe Musgrove well. Only hard hit ball Joe Musgrove given up all day was a home run to McMahon. Yeah. Ma- but yeah, Juan Soto had a 110 mile an hour line out double. Yeah. Like Brand Jury got robbed of a two run homer. Potters were hitting the crap out of the ball. Yeah. But it's right at people. And that's base. That's like, that's baseball. You can't. And again, I, like I said, it, Joe Musgrove did not pitch very well. He four and two thirds innings, six runs. But really, uh, other than McMahon and home run, everything else was just weak contact, bloop singles. And the umpire was just, I, I think he was a Rockies fan. Yeah, super wide zone for McMahon. Yeah. Super wide zone so for. Sorry, wide zone for Freeland. No. And tight zone from Musgrove. It was yeah. really frustrating. But we can't complain. Yeah. We ended this eight game stretch six and two. Pretty good. You and I both said five and three. Yep. And we would be happy. Yep. Six and two, we're ecstatic. Yep. Six and two with Juan Soto at the end of it. Very happy about that. Yeah. So th- this this week has been one of the more or less just it's a tiring week. You could tell. Oh, it's so been, do you have any general thoughts other than trades about these two series? Yeah, I think for one, it, I mean, the same thing happened. It, it, the consistent get rid of Mon Soto, Josh Bell and Brendan Drury. We probably still win all those games against the the Rockies. Probably. Because the, mar- the pitching was so good for most of it, right? And we kept them so tight of a margin. And the Twins games were, the last game was like, you know, a one-run difference. And it and the first, the Friday game was only, lo- only allowed one run. So my general sense about this series, these two series, is like still our pitching is elite. And it's going to get us far. I am very happy about the offense that happened over the past um, five days. You know, I think that it's encouraging to see not just the new guys hit well. All It seems like all the... Manny's had great hits. Um, Cronenworth has great hits. Krentz had big hits. Like, that's super cool. And, that, you know, I think that... What it tells me is we're actually a well-rounded team now. Yes. Uh, with a potential with one Fernando Tatis Jr. coming back as being this, possibly the scariest lineup in baseball. I agree. Also with some of the biggest bats off the bench. Oh, yeah. So I I think my general sense from, from the series or what's got us to this far being 15 some odd I don't, are we 15 games above or 14 we're 14 games? games now 14 games above 500 has been our elite pitching and that can't stop cuz that will win us more that'll win us more baseball games than elite hitting just will yes and so that's to continue and i think that they've shown that they've you know you know in a time so i was trying to think back this same time period last year Literally was the same week we saw the worst game at Petco Park. Yeah. Right? You and I saw the 15-5 to blowout. And it was 15-2 to in the ninth inning. We came back for three. So. And those were the most exciting three runs <laughs> I've seen since all the five, pre- All five of us in the stadium were very excited. <laughs> yeah, we were cheering our asses off of the few national fans look at us like we were drunk. We probably were, but it was just such a... Because we were so excited that we scored a couple runs. Right. And so, but that, we had, we didn't get consistent pitching. And so, and, you know, Darvish would soon be hurt later that, later that few weeks from then. So, I think just going into the next couple months with depth of starting pitching makes me feel really good. And I feel like these two series tell you this is sustainable. 
th- this will work against good teams and bad teams. Yes. And so that makes me happy, you know, and hopefully with with great with a great story lineup, you don't have to throw, you don't have to strike out 20 guys to feel like you have to win the game. Exactly. So. And th- so this has probably been one of the most high point weeks in baseball history and Padre history. Oh yeah, for sure. We were against the first place team. We took two out of three of them. Yep. We extended Joe Musgrove. Yep. Will Myers came back from the IL and he looks like he's 19. He's been oh. running around. He's so excited to be the big league club again. He's gotten a couple hits. He's driven a couple runs. He's been playing a fantastic de- defense first base, defensive first base. And then we traded for Josh Hader. Yep. Okay. Then, then you know, the Soto, Bell, Dreary. Let's not forget Gallagher. Nope. We got that guy, too. I've never seen a fair photo of him, but <laughs> we, we have a whole square named after him. That's true. I Must mean, we already good. have Gallagher Square. Obviously, that's what we needed. Obviously. It. Yeah. And the whole team and the whole city just feels pumped. This was This was the best thing they could have done. To pump up the team and the city. And my general thoughts on both the series was. I'm very glad we don't play Minnesota every year multiple times. Yeah. They are the. The embodiment of a little of an like a irritant team. Oh, yeah. If, yeah. Byron Buxton shows up. And you're like, oh, you're going to hit. You're going to hit a 500 foot home run. Yeah. Just by blinking. <laughs> oh. They're a very, and also with them, I understand now why Jace Tingler, they wanted Jace Tingler very badly in that team as a bench coach. They're running that team like Jace Tingler ran last year's Padres. Yeah. They have their starters have the fewest innings of anybody else like we did, and their bullpen has been used a ton. They don't let their starters see the batters for a third time. I mean, they're first place, they're. T- their division, but let's hope they don't have a collapse. And what we saw on the Saturday game is that they can, once they have momentum, it's kind of like they score five runs. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's, that's a tough team to go against. Because and, it's, yeah. And the thing with the Rockies series, for whatever reason, the Rockies have been that irritating little specter that we can't seem to yeah. get rid of. And 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 we've lost we're up to that series. We lost eight out of nine to them this year. I can't remember. I try to block them all out. I hate I hate remembering Coors games. They're the worst kind of games to remember. Yeah, yeah we've lost a lot. They've owned us this year. And we finally they came to town. Yeah, they won the last one. Yeah, but I think we showed them. Listen, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Calm down. Yeah. You did not improve at all during the trade deadline. No. No. Not one bit. Uh, I guess the other thing I think about, should we be worried about Musgrove? No. Yeah. Because he his first start uh, the Saturday's game, he pitched really. He only gave up a couple runs, and he pitched really well. Even though clearly his stuff wasn't a lot of stuff wasn't working, he still battled through it. This game, he just again you said bad, just terrible luck. Yeah. Our offense kept on hit, like dreary hit goes robbed of a home run. Right. And Juan Soto almost killed C.J. Chrome with a line out. Right. It was just like, and again the umpire today was garbage. The robot umpire cannot get here quick enough. <laughs> and but may- I, mean, I, I do wonder because his last seven games he's like a five year and run average. He doesn't he isn't as dominant as he is was in the early time of the year. Um yeah and I think Ryan McMahon just He's also pitched against them a bunch of times, and just it's the Rockies. Rockies is specifically hard one because they pitch. He pitched a bunch against them, and so you just kind of have to be like they know you. You know they they're not going to be fooled by the your awesome curveball anymore. You know they're not going to be fooled by your slider and fastball. They're going to hunt the pitch they can recognize and try to get it. Yeah, the biggest and Mike McMahon owns them. And just the way it is, like just yeah. 
the biggest test for Musgrove will be the next time he pitches against San Francisco. Be because key, right? he needs to bounce back. And I think he will. I think he just got an extension. I think he's going to figure out what's wrong. He's going to probably be pitching a night game. So maybe I'll do a little bit better for him. Mm, I like this. Should we just ban day games? We have the I mean, power, right? I, I, yeah. So I'll, I'll get on the phone to the commissioner right now. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Hey, Rob. You like messing with tradition? Yeah. Here's a Manford rule you need to enact. Guaranteed to make the the only half of the baseball fans that don't hate you to hate you. Right. Yeah. Oh, man. So, no, I'm not worried about Musgrove because I've seen enough pitchers struggle this year and bounce back, i.e. Clevenger, Snell, and yeah. Ruben Abel has been able to get him back. Yeah. And, you know, if his offense starts doing what did every, what we did yesterday... You know, just give us innings, dude. You know, exactly. Maybe, maybe that's okay. If all of a sudden we can score seven, eight runs consistently, or even four or five runs consistently, that changes the whole aspect of our se- the rest of our right. season. I agree. Um, should we look forward to next week, James? Three games in Sodom and Gomorrah. Wow. Wow. And then back here for three games against San Francisco. Yep. Friday, we're facing Gonsolin, Catman himself. Saturday, you're facing Andrew Heaney. And Sunday, we're facing Tyler Anderson. And they're going to, and we're throwing out Manaya, Clevenger, and Darvish. Yep. The problem is the Dodgers are going to feel like they're going to be entitled to the victory because they're going to be, they're going to have a giant ceremony for Vince Scully at the beginning mm, of Friday. And you're saying the baseball gods are going to hate us on Friday. No, I think Dodgers are going to think they're going to be entitled and they're going to feel really bad when we beat them. Okay. Because like Vince that. Scully was a national treasure. Not just owned by the Dodgers. Not just the Do- Dodgers. And yeah, let's be honest. Once Vince Scully dies, there is died. There was nothing left in LA. Good. That's it. <laughs> L.A. is that, that he was the last thing in L.A. that was redeemable. I bet you he lived in Santa Barbara too, or like Orange County. Vince Scully doesn't strike me as someone who has an apartment in downtown Los Angeles. Oh, he definitely didn't live in L.A. Yeah. yeah, he was too good of a gentleman. Yeah, and remember, he he was basically forced from Brooklyn oh, yeah. to L.A. I'm thinking it had to have been some sort of like. They owned him in some way. Wow. I'm just saying, well, like there was, there was, there was some shenanigans that kept Vince Scully in LA for so long. No <laughs> way, such a nice person was in such an evil area, other than maybe they had one of his kids kidnapped. I don't know. These are speculations. You, you are, you. This is all speculations and very fake news. <laughs> <laughs> very fake news. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, Vince Scully, you will be deeply missed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Go listen to some of his greatest calls. His Sandy Koufax perfect game. Yeah, Hank best. Aaron's 715th home run. Yeah, it, it, He was a legend and a constant gentleman. But again, you were the only good thing in L.A. So <laughs> I, 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 th- I, I think we're going to take two out of three from them. I, I agree. I think Andrew Heaney is, and Tyler Anderson are very beatable. I think we have uh, a guy named Brandon Drury that loves feasting on off-speed pitches from left-handers. And Anderson and Haney both do that. I think that Soto loves hitting in L.A. He loves... He's he's not scared about any moment. The kid is going to do great. I I think that Clevenger is going to be gonna love it he's gonna eat it up and darvish loves loves the pitch there too so and i i think friday's gonna be the toughest one definitely Manaya. gonna be the toughest one Manaya is definitely the most struggle muffin of all yeah. of the, and the last time Manaya faced the dodgers he got wrecked it might be the last time the baseball gods do la a favor because wow they are even wow the baseball gods respected 
Vince Scully. Vince Scully. That's the only reason why I can imagine yeah. that, uh, L.A. is still there. Yeah. They haven't sunk into the ocean yet. You have it here for your... You have it here first, folks. <laughs> the only reason. <laughs> um, and the Giants series, I'm thinking... Giants are struggling. They got rid of Darren Ruff, who hits us pretty well. Um, but they got J.D. Davis, though, who also hits pretty well. So they're kind of the same team we saw last time. They did just get swept by the Dodgers. Yeah. I, I think we're going to do good. As long if we face Rodon and Logan Webb, we're gonna have a tough time because Logan Webb just like destroys us. Well, he destroyed the old us. That's true. That, uh, that's the thing yeah. we have to. Brent Logan Webb also likes the off-speed pitches. Right. We now have better off-speed hitters. Yeah. I. It's just tough. I don't know the pitchers, but I would assume Rodon would be Tuesday because they pitch. He pitched on Wednesday. Yeah, so we're going to face Rodon one of these games, and that's going to be a tough... We're going to lose the game with Rodon pitches. But I think you're right. Their they're bullpen, not great. In kind of shambles. Rodon does throw a lot of pitches early. And yeah, I think we're to two or three. I think um, we're going to capitalize on them. I think Soto Fever is going to... Just I think, I think just we're going to keep building upon the vibe. Yes. And they're going to come back home against the Giants. People will come out to see the Giants and Padres. You know, last time I faced the Giants, also had walk-off. So, you know, yeah. I'm going to say we're 4-2. and two. I'm going to say 5-1. and one. Ooh. I think we're going to lose one. I think we're going to lose tomorrow night against the Dodgers because okay. Vince Scully. But, again, if we win, that means the, the Dodgers have, again, I've proven they're Nobody, even nobody has any grace for them. <laughs> this is the last grace they have is tomorrow night. Anyways, and I think we're going to sweep the Giants because one thing that we haven't discussed yet, there is a high probability that we're going to get a certain shortstop back for the Giants series. Ooh, baby. And I don't care who we're facing for the Giants. Right, right. <laughs> if, if any team, you thought... Well, uh, if you thought Wednesday was, I mean, was nuts with the Soto game, the first game was Soto, Tatis, and Machado, and Bell, and Cronenworth, and Dreary all hitting. Yeah. Good night. Yeah. It's going to be wild. So, um, Tatis Jr. is um, scheduled to start a rehab game. Yeah. Tomorrow or tomorrow or Saturday, they haven't decided yet. Dude, that minor league game is going to be hopping. <laughs> Wherever he ends up, gonna it's going to be the San Antonio Missions. Oh yeah, I can't drive there. I, can't, can I? I mean, I could. We have uh, friends that live out there. We yeah. should tell them to go see it. Yeah. Um, I was going to bring up. I don't have it readily available, but Tatis Jr. historically um, is incredible on the day he comes back from injured from injury list, like. Otherworldly, I think it has a 264 weighted runs created plus. What that means is he is a hundred, he is a 160 times better than an average player when he comes back in creating runs, driving in runs, being in positions to create runs. Dude is a beast when he comes back from the IL, and like he's already hitting home runs off of real pitchers. And he, I mean, I, he's gonna come back with such a I, I really honestly believe this. He's going to come back and just be the Tatis Jr. of old and actually and then some. I think he's going to end the year with that anywhere from 17 to 24 home runs. Yeah, I think he's going to go ham. And if he comes back on Tuesday, do the Tuesday night game with Tatis, Soto, and Machado, like, I don't know if it's going to be that quick of a rehab, but, you know, it's Tatis. He's going to... He might just destroy two games in the minor leagues. Like, you know what? This is not necessary. This this charade if we're doing isn't <laughs> worth it. Well, I I would have hoped. I I have this like secret idea that they've been actually already rehabbing him in secret, <laughs> in like secret underground leagues. Yeah. And then they're gonna announce him. Some guy named John Doe with dreads right, has right, been right. hidden. <laughs> right. With a funny nose and a big mustache. <laughs> with the mustache, the nose. Yeah. yeah. 
and they're going to announce them tomorrow for the Dodgers series. How cool would that be? <laughs> Not going to happen, but I would love that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. If Tatis comes back to the Giants series, oh, it's game over. Definitely. The, vibe, the vibes would be too good. You cannot, like, people in San Diego love Soto already. Like, people already love Juan Soto. So the second they announced the Soto trade, apparently they called in everybody that works at the, the Padres shop to print jerseys, and they've been work. They worked basically through the night to print Soto jerseys. When I showed up to the ball game on Wednesday, I got there an hour early. There were big old signs sold out of Soto jerseys. Yeah, but you know, so um, my father-in-law um, danced with my wife at our wedding to a song called I Loved You First. I love Tatis first, you know. <laughs> I was wondering, like, where is this going? <laughs> like, I don't know what's going on here. I don't, I like, you, if weird you know, time to get sentimental. <laughs> like, the vibes of, like, Soto's, like, Soto's the cool, it is, is your prize warrior. But Tatis is still the crown prince. Like, let's just, you know. Oh, I agree. When when he comes back, and if he comes back on Tuesday, you're absolutely right. That place is going to be bananas. And when so when Tatis hits a 450-foot moonshot and he admires it, I mean, come on, baby. Bat flip, yeah. Oh, I mean, Soto is like, Soto is the definition of a mind games master. He plays, he plays baseball like chess. And he's, I mean, that sounds so silly, but he, he says this. It's part of my game is I try to get in the pitcher's head. All you have to do is watch the World Series where he he um, hit the home run off of Justin Verlander. Oh, yeah. Justin Verlander threw the ball, and he started doing his solo shuffle, and Verlander yells, not here, not to me. Yeah. And he threw another one, and he did it again. And Verlander was like, not here, kid, not yeah. to me. And he he pissed so um, Verlander off Verlander threw him the threw him gas and he had like a 500 foot home run and because he got in Verlander's head a veteran first ballot Hall of Famer yeah head and and this this 20 year old kid broke down Verlander and Tatis is not that guy Tatis is basically like show me your best stuff I'll show you my best stuff yeah and most of the time it ends up that best stuff ends up in the stands. <laughs> like it's very far away. Look at this, this, this. That lineup is terrifying. Yeah, I mean, I think Juan Soto said it best. Good luck to the pitchers, and he's right. Like you, you brought it up before we recorded. Chad Cool on Wednesday night was not prepared no. to throw that game against the Padres. No, he. It was very clear to me that like he just. Couldn't handle that much people yelling. He thought when he was prepping on Monday, he was going to face the Padres. He didn't realize he was going to face a reinvigorated San Diego County. <laughs> you think he's going to face the NL All Stars? Right. He just he just he didn't game plan that. Yeah. And then he just was. I mean, hit Cronenworth, loved that grand slam, get nine hundred runs. Like it wasn't a good day. No. Uh, he just wasn't prepared because they just came out and just destroyed him. And which makes me super excited because August, September has some bad teams they're facing. And the Potters, got to, they got to smell blood in the water and attack pitchers. I agree. Like happened on Friday to Joe Ryan, that, the Twins pitcher. Blood in the water was smelled, attacked him. And when you have as good of a lineup with, with those, with those three guys we mentioned that are all healthy, you got to attack. Pedal the metal, baby. I agree. So you're saying four and two. I'm saying five and one. Yeah. Joey, what a week of baseball. It's it's so wild. I I am still like I'm still not like every time he comes up, um what him being Juan Soto, I'm like, you really did get him, huh? This isn't some like weird like cosplay thing. This yeah, some, we got like, him. We, we he's not like watching some MLB the Show streamer and be like, "Look, I put Juan Soto in a Padres jersey." It's like he really is here, and he's beautiful. Yeah, I don't know if you can. I don't know if I can. Um, so I recorded his first at bat. Okay, and like, let's see if I can play this. Well, like I said, all, all you have to do is hear. Yeah. 
all you have to know is they dra- we drowned out the PA system. Oh, yeah. See, the organist for the Padres said that um, this is the loudest. They have, like, they have decibel meters in the stadium. That game was the highest they've ever seen, like, crowd noise be that loud in the history of Petco Park. It felt like leaving a rock concert. That's and you just sort of, like, shell-shocked. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I would have, like... Oftentimes when I leave concerts, I can't sleep. Were you able to sleep afterwards? Yes. Okay. But I was also really tired. I was <laughs> in traffic for 45 okay, minutes that's leaving. Fair. That's fair. I, I just... But what a week, man. What a week. This week feels like a year of baseball news. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it just... Man, next couple months can be fun. Yes, they it are. should be fun. And I, I can't wait. Neither can I. Thank you so much for listening, everybody. Until next time... Go, Go Padres. Padres. And there it is. Ho-ho, doctor. You can hang a star on that, baby.